So you're looking at potential career options outside of your typical nine to five. Maybe you've had an interest in creating content and you're wondering how you can pivot that into a full-time career. You probably see these content creators or videographers all over social media, traveling the world, working with clients, seemingly living it up, and you want to get on the action too. The only problem, you start looking up common gear you need to make it in the industry and you're hit with price tag after price tag, thousands and thousands of dollars, which basically covers just the bare essentials and you may not actually know what those bare essentials are. This is an unfortunate cycle that I see so many people fall into when they start their journey as a content creator, freelance videographer, or whatever else you wanna call it. A, there's a ton of potential gear options. B, most of it is extremely expensive. And C, when you're just getting started, the lack of clarity when it comes to what you actually need is debilitating. Combine all these factors and most people never end up truly getting started because they just don't know what their immediate next step should be. And that's precisely the problem that I'd like to help solve in this video. I'm gonna outline the exact arsenal of gear that I truly believe anyone with the right skills could take and easily make six figures a year selling video services to clients. And I'll even run through a few different options for each category of gear depending on your budget. Ideally, this is the last video you could ever need to watch when it comes to making purchasing decisions. Everything after this should be focused on mastering the gear you have, understanding business fundamentals, and really just going out and taking action rather than sitting in that painful analysis paralysis phase that so many people get caught in. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with this channel, my name is Anthony Gallo. I started selling video services as a side hustle in college when I was studying to become a doctor, and I made good money in college doing that. And when I graduated, I took the terrifying leap of saying, saying no to continuing on to med school and instead focused full time on my video business. Now, despite a handful of doubters who definitely questioned my decision, I went on to make over $100,000 in that first year full time. And every year since then, that number has increased. And that's just looking at my business selling video services to clients. It doesn't factor in all the other businesses that I've started along the way. Now, I think it's important to point out here that I was also not landing massive $25,000 video deals with big name clients. I was not making this money by starting YouTube channels and landing huge sponsorships or any of those other things that you see a lot of big content creators doing to make their living. I was making this money selling video services to relatively small to medium sized local businesses, shooting wedding videos on the weekends, the occasional music video with up and coming artists, stuff like that. The reason I say all of this is absolutely not to brag. Instead, it's because, well, I want you to have a little background on who you're listening to here. And I also want to make it clear at how simple this business model is when you break it down. It's easy to think you need to land these massive jobs or have these super lucky opportunities fall onto your lap in order to make decent money. But in reality, you just need to keep it simple and stack straightforward jobs one after another. The need for content nowadays is only increasing. And if you put yourself in the right position, you will almost certainly succeed. I like to compare it to the famous saying, it's not hard, but it does take hard work. Now, finally, before we dive into this gear list, keep in mind that we could talk about a ton of different options, but the approach that I'm taking is for those who plan on taking the traditional freelancer route, where you kind of start doing a variety of jobs that usually fall into the categories of local commercial work, events, weddings, real estate, and music videos. If you have the gear that we talk about in today's video, you will be able to do all of these with little to no issues. On the other hand, if you plan on doing something wildly specific like nature documentaries or paragliding documentaries, you'll probably need some other specific gear. Okay, heavy intro, I know, but I really wanted to set the stage and give people an idea of who this video is for. So without any further ado, let's start diving into the five filmmaking tools that you need to make six figures a year. Up first, an absolute slam dunk of a no brainer you need a camera and you knew this, but let's talk about what type of camera is required to make over six figures a year. This is a hotly debated topic, probably representing about half of the filmmaking content on YouTube, but I'm going to boil things down and make it as simple as possible. In my eyes, you need a camera that can at least shoot in 1080p at up to 60 frames per second. Almost all cameras can do this nowadays, which is pretty awesome if you're someone just getting started. I like to think the unofficial start of my video business was the first wedding I filmed, which was for free, by the way with this camera. It is a Nikon D3300 and it is nothing special. I have just kit lenses on it, but it's capable of shooting in 1080p at up to 60 frames per second. You could go online right now and get this entire setup for under $300. Now, this isn't the best camera in the world for beginners, but it was what I had access to at the time and it was just because I was borrowing it from my girlfriend. But doing that allowed me to shoot my first few weddings, my first few commercials, my first music video, and my first real estate video. I could shoot in 1080p 
1080p at 24 frames per second for talking head content in commercials. And then I could bump the frame rate up to 60 for things like weddings or real estate where I wanted that ultra smooth, buttery slow motion. It wasn't the highest quality look in the world, but it was versatile enough to cover a lot of different types of jobs. And I guarantee you that I could replace my main camera with that Nikon D3300 and continue to make over six figures a year and maybe just renting out larger cameras a few times a year for those bigger shoots. Now that represents the bare minimum as far as cameras are concerned. In full transparency, I did quickly upgrade from the Nikon as soon as I started making better money from my jobs. And that brings me to the main target here for camera recommendations, which would be the best full frame camera that you can afford. I think every major brand has a full frame option that's great, so I wouldn't get too picky. But to get specific, I personally love the Canon EOS R, which is one of the cameras that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. But I also love the EOS RP. I love the Sony a7C and the new Sony a7 IV. All of these are great options that you could probably find online used for a great price. Now with a full frame sensor, you get better performance in low light, a shallower depth of field, higher bit rates, and better overall quality in most situations compared to cheaper crop sensor cameras like the Nikon D3300. Going with any of those entry level full frame cameras that I just mentioned is great, but you could also splurge and get something a bit more expensive like the Sony a7S III that I'm actually filming on right now. But at the end of the day, if your goal is to make a decent living, it does not matter which one of these full frame cameras you get, you can easily make six figures with each one. And remember, just like I did, you can start with something like the Nikon D3300 and steadily upgrade over time in that first year, but only if you start taking action to begin with. Then finally, just because I know the comments are coming, yes, I know most smartphones can shoot in 1080p at 60 frames per second. I think it would be an unrealistic goal to think that you're going to make six figures shooting only with an iPhone. But like the Nikon situation, you can absolutely get started with an iPhone. And I have proof actually because I recently got paid to film an ad for one of my clients on a smartphone advertising one of their med spa services. And the commercial we shot in the style of an Instagram reel actually went on to make almost $20,000 in revenue for them in just 30 days. It truly all comes down to knowing what you're doing with the gear you have and also being a good marketer, which if you're running your own business, you should be focusing on that anyways. All right, camera done, covered. From a purely business perspective, that is such a simple decision and I wouldn't overcomplicate it any more than what we just said. Up next, coming in at number two, related to the camera, we have a great lens. And I think this is such an easy choice here when it comes to the best lens, if I can only have one. For me, 98% of the filming I do is with a 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens. And I highly recommend this be your first purchase as well, especially if you plan on doing a lot of different types of jobs when you're first getting started. Basically all major lens manufacturers have a great option when it comes to the 24 to 70 millimeter. The one on my Canon EOS R right now is the Canon 24 to 70 F 2.8. And I really like it. I think it gets the job done well, but the one I'm actually filming on right now attached to my Sony is the Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter. It's a little bit more affordable and I don't see any drop in quality. Now what's really great about this lens is it's just so freaking versatile and I love it. Fully zoomed out, you can get wide full body shots, perfect for interviews, commercials, weddings, events, close-up action sports, real estate, travel videos, music videos, and so much more. Then we can zoom all the way in to that 70 millimeter mark and get those dreamy compressed shots with awesome background blur, perfect again for certain wedding situations, dramatic shots in travel films, commercial work, maybe even narrative work, and filming subjects from a relative distance. Not to mention that's just the beginning. And on top of that, you have every focal length in between 24 and 70, which is a lot that you can work around with. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, if you are on a crop sensor camera, like the Nikon D3300, we want to accommodate for that crop in that comes because of that smaller sensor. The Nikon, for example, has a 1.5x crop factor. So all we do there is multiply the focal length of the lens that we actually are putting on that camera by 1.5, which is the crop factor. And the number we get is the effective focal length that we're actually going to see when we're taking pictures and videos with that combo. So with all that math in mind, something like Sigma's 18 to 50 millimeter f2.8 would be a perfect option. If we multiply that by the crop, factor of 1.5, it's effectively a 27 to 75 millimeter lens, giving us that same awesome versatility we talked about before. Now that lens in particular is just for Sony cameras, but another great option would be the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f 1.8 lens, which again gives us that nice spread of focal lengths. And then finally, you can also get a speed booster, which 
allows you to adapt full frame lenses onto crop sensor cameras. That pretty much does it for lenses. The only exception here is if you planned on only shooting something like real estate work, in which case I'd recommend you get a slightly wider option like a 16 to 35. That way you can really expand those spaces and make them look as big as possible. Or if you planned on doing only sports or nature content, and in that case, I'd recommend something much more telephoto like a 70 to 200 millimeter, or maybe something even more zoomed in than that. But again, let's backtrack and remember the purpose of this essential gear list. It's the bare minimum that a person could need to make six figures doing a variety of jobs that most beginners find themselves doing in year one and two. All right, up next, essential gear number three is a stabilizer. This is a broad term and there are tons of options out there, but I could not imagine doing what I do without my trusty gimbal. I take it with me on practically every shoot I have and it makes capturing smooth, professional looking footage very easy. I personally use the DJI Ronin S, which is obviously a bit dated at this point, but again, it just goes to show that you don't need the best of the best to make good money. But if you're in the market and you don't have a gimbal, I'd recommend pretty much anything that DJI sells. They have gimbals for all different types and sizes of cameras. They have different budget options, and usually you can find older generations used online for amazing prices. Like I've said for all the other gear, this gimbal allows me to easily film commercials, weddings, music videos, events, real estate concerts, and so much more. In fact, this camera, lens, and gimbal combo is basically the run and gun filmmaker dream setup. It's super versatile and super functional. Now, when we talk about stabilizers, it's pretty hard not to also mention a tripod, which is obviously another essential filmmaking tool. And I know it's technically another piece of gear, but I would recommend you get a tripod as well. And the good news here is that there are plenty online that are basically dirt cheap and accomplish the job of keeping your camera still for a nice static shot. I use tripods for things like this where I'm just talking into a static camera. I use them for interview shoots where I'm you know, talking to a subject on camera. And I also use them for sports content where maybe I wanna keep the camera steady and just pan back and forth capturing a subject you know that's kind of far away personally i started my business with a glide cam which is a type of stabilizer that uses a counterweight system to keep your camera stabilized and after that i bought a cheap tripod along the way and then eventually i upgraded to a gimbal in that first year and i basically never looked back i can't remember pretty much any times that I've used my glide cam over my gimbal. I think glide cams are great tools, but in my opinion, gimbals are just a bit more useful. And especially for new content creators, I think they're easier to get up and start using and get those professional looking shots. All right, before moving on to essential gear number four, if you don't mind taking a quick second to smash that like button beneath this video and also subscribe to our channel, that would be a huge help. We greatly appreciate it. And here's a quick video of a puppy to thank you for doing that. But back to it, coming in at number four, we have have a professional microphone slash recording device. You've probably heard YouTubers say it a million times, but audio is half of the viewing experience, whether we like to admit it or not. So with that in mind, it's absolutely crucial that we factor it into our business and the gear we buy. If you're filming a classic local business commercial, you're probably going to have an interview element, which means you need a recording device. If you're filming a lot of weddings, you probably want to capture those emotional vows throughout the ceremony and include that in the final edit. Now, you might be able to get away for a little while not having a recording device, but eventually you're going to need to get it for a job. Like anything, there are tons of options and it can get super overwhelming, but for run and gun filmmakers, I'd suggest getting a lav mic with a dedicated recorder like this Zoom H1N. Unlike on-camera shotgun mics, which require you to actually be close to your subject, this lav mic setup can be 200 feet away from your camera and still capture amazing audio. I personally use this setup for commercials when I need to mic up a subject. I use this for weddings where I actually stick the mic under the groom's tie, and then I tuck the Zoom H1N in his pocket, which allows me to capture all of his audio from the ceremony. And usually if I leave it in auto mode, it will actually adjust to get the officiant and the bride's audio as well. Now, because they are set separate devices, you will need to sync that audio in post, which isn't really that terrible. But if you wanted to get over that, you could also use a wireless recording setup like this Rode Wireless Go 2. With this, you actually leave the transmitter with your subject, and then you connect the receiver to your camera, and you will get crystal clear audio cooked right into your actual video file, so you don't need to do any synchronization. All right, and finally on this list, essential gear number five, you're going to want to get at least one professional light. Similar to the recording device in the last section, I was 
was able to avoid having to purchase a light for a little while getting started, in which case I would just try to kind of place my subjects in well-lit areas, whether that's filming next to a window or just filming outdoors. But eventually as time went on and I made a bit more money, I got a single professional light specifically to help with my commercial shoots and also to place in the background of wedding receptions where the lighting would get pretty dark, especially during those first dance portions. I bought a used Westcott Solix Apollo, which ran me a few hundred dollars and it upgraded the look of my content like crazy. I always tell people that buying just one light will usually increase the quality of your content significantly more than buying a new camera will, assuming you actually put the light to good use. Now, if I were you and I were getting my first light, I probably wouldn't recommend the Westcott. I think it's a little bit expensive compared to the quality you get. And instead, I would recommend getting the Godox SL60 paired with a softbox. This is super versatile. It has tons of light output and it's just a great overall light. I own this along with a few other lights as well and I use this one all the time. It's probably my go-to out of everything I own. It's actually what I'm using right now to light this scene and I also use it in my commercials, I use it in weddings, I use it in pretty much everything that I'm filming. And that my friends covers the five essential pieces of gear that I think anyone can take and make six figures a year selling video services. And let's run through a few examples of common jobs and how these tools actually factor in. Most local commercials consist of two general elements a talking head interview and more cinematic B-roll to display what the subject is actually talking about in the interview. You can easily record a professional interview with the camera and lens combo, not to mention your audio will be crystal clear and your scene will look super pro due to that awesome lighting setup. Then the B-roll will also be super pro. You'll be able to capture a diverse range of shots due to the versatile focal length of the lens that you got. You can pop the light in here and there to upgrade the quality of the look and the gimbal will make sure that all of your shots that actually have movement in them are super smooth smooth and professional. If this were a wedding, generally speaking, you just kind of follow the action throughout the day. And this is perfect when you have a gimbal because you can run around, capture all of those smooth cinematic shots. And then on top of that, since you usually are running around and you don't have that much time to switch around gear, you're going to want a super versatile lens that's going to allow you to zoom out and get wide shots and very quickly zoom in and get tight shots without needing to change up your entire setup. We also have a recording device to capture all of the amazing vows from the ceremony and maybe a few small interviews with subjects along the way as well. We have a light in case the first dance is super dark and hard to follow. You can probably see here, we have all of our bases covered. We just crushed that shoot and we don't actually need that much gear to accomplish it. Now, if you're filming a music video, you'd simply run through the song multiple times, each take using a different focal length or filming style, all possible with the versatile lens and gimbal setup. And you can even use that light if you're in a situation that calls for it to upgrade the look as well. You can pretty much run through that same process with events, real estate videos, and so on. Now, yes, there are definitely a few smaller pieces of gear that we didn't touch on, like memory cards, and obviously we need a computer to edit these videos, but I'm trying to keep this video from getting super long, and I figured we could kind of breeze by those simply because things like a memory card are relatively small, and it's hard to choose wrong with them. Most cameras will come with recommendations. And a computer, yes, it's super important, but I'd like to think that most people either have a computer already or they have the ability to borrow someone else else's computer, like a family member, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, or something like that. Now, if you're still watching this video, it's probably because you've been seriously considering this career path, or maybe you've already started and you're looking to get a better understanding of what it actually takes. As important as it is to have this gear, what's even more important is knowing how to use the gear that you already own to produce cinematic and professional looking content. And this is exactly what we teach people how to do in our flagship program, 14 Day Filmmaker. This course has helped over 50,000 people master the camera they they currently own and accomplish all of the things we've been talking about throughout this entire video. 14 Day Filmmaker streamlines the learning experience and provides daily practice exercises to get people away from their computer, out of consumption mode, and into creation mode, which is truly the only way to actually develop creative skill sets like filmmaking. You get lifetime access to hundreds of content creation tutorials, student discounts like 60% off Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects, and you get lifetime access to our weekly Q&A calls that we host in our private student community helping you get your questions answered lightning fast. Not to mention, it is the most affordable course of its kind, coming in at just $48. If you want to enroll, it takes just 60 seconds to sign up, and it's the first link in the description beneath this video. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.